If you're in search of an immutable operating system based on Ubuntu, then consider yourself trying Vanilla OS. This brand new Linux distribution offers a unique feature of complete immutability through the use of AB root, a subsystem mechanism that allows you to run Ubuntu, Arch Linux, and Fedora inside a container. In this video, we will take a quick tour of Vanilla OS. At the end of this video, I will demonstrate how to install it on your computer. Without further ado, let's dig deeper into the Vanilla OS. When you log in for the first time, you will be greeted with a welcome screen that allows you to customize the system to your liking. From here, you can choose your preferred system theme and install proprietary graphic card drivers to improve the performance of graphic-intensive applications. Another great feature of the welcome screen is that it suggests additional package managers for you to install such as Flatpak and AppImage. You can also install core GNOME applications and necessary tools based on your interests. The setup process is designed to be quick and non-invasive, and once it's complete, you will need to reboot to begin using your device with Vanilla OS. If you are familiar with Ubuntu, you may know that the Ubuntu team modifies the upstream source of GNOME by adding features like the Yaru theme, dock, accent colors, and more. However, Vanilla OS offers a pure GNOME experience which is free from these modifications. Now as you can see, Vanilla OS offers a stock GNOME shell and looks much more minimal compared to Ubuntu. Most of the bloatware has been removed, leaving only a minimal set of essential applications. To install additional applications, you can use Flatpak, AppImage, or the GNOME Software Center. In addition to the wallpapers, Vanilla OS also comes with a few pre-installed wallpapers that look quite nice. In the beta version of Vanilla OS, we have seen on-demand immutability of the root file system using the tool called Almost. Unfortunately, Vanilla developers have removed it and switched to AB root, which offers complete immutability and atomicity by making transactions between two root partitions. AB root allows for on-demand transactions via transactional SHA. Unlike other Linux distros, Vanilla OS has two root partitions. Each root partition is created with 20 GB of free space during the installation. That's the requirement for AB root to achieve complete immutability. AB root defines these two root partitions as states, present and future. After the installation of Vanilla OS, the present state is set to be the first root partition, which is letter A. You can verify the state by typing this command. If I try to install any package like Ubuntu Way using apt or dpkg, it won't let me alter the root file system. Instead, what you can do is perform a transaction on the second root partition, also known as the future root partition. To do so, type sudo abroot shell to enter into the transactional shell. Now as you can see, I have gained access to use apt or dpkg to install any kind of package. Now whatever the changes you made in the shell will be applied to the future root on the next boot on successful. If the transaction fails, no changes are applied. Now let's try to install some packages using apt. 
Once you have finished installing packages and have exited the transactional shell, the system will sync the changes. On the next reboot, the system will automatically switch to the second root partition, which is B. Now, this process can be frustrating as it requires a reboot each time you want to install any new application or package. However, once you have set up your OS, you can use the system in a normal way. If you don't want to use AB root, Vanilla OS also offers the options to use Apex, a subsystem container, and a package manager. Apex is designed to be easy to use while also being powerful enough to support installing packages from multiple sources without altering the root file system. To use Apex, simply type Apex help in a terminal to learn the available command. Then you can create an instance of the container by typing apx space init and waiting for it to create the Ubuntu container which gives you access to apt and dpkg. From here, you can install packages as normal but without the need for sudo. For example, you can type apex install neofetch to install the package inside the container. To run the package, type apex run followed by the command name. You can also enter the container directly by typing apex enter and the shell prompt will change to show you that you're inside the container. From here, you can use apt and dpkg as normal. Now using the vanilla OS control center, you can also create subsystem containers with Arch Linux and Fedora inside vanilla OS. Simply click the plus button to set up an Arch Linux container. Once it's done, you can use the Pacman package manager to install packages. Now with this approach, you can run multiple subsystem containers on one Linux distribution, preserving the main root file system and improving privacy and security. Vanilla OS comes with a new concept of automatic updating using an intelligent system called Vanilla System Operator. Now this tool will periodically check for an update and then download and install it in the background if the device is not under heavy usage. Now VSO checks that certain checks are met such as whether the system resources are free. This system is designed to take away annoying tasks from the user who simply wants to do their own thing. 
New updates go through AB transactions are applied on the next reboot without taking extra time during the boot. From the vanilla control center, it's also possible to set the update frequency. You can also check when the last one was performed and turn off smart update features. Now in conclusion, I would say that Vanilla OS is a secure operating system based on Ubuntu that is well suited for developers and advanced users. However, it's important to note that an immutable operating system like Vanilla OS may present some challenges for those who are not familiar with its usage. Overall, if you are comfortable with advanced features and have a specific use case in mind, Vanilla OS could be a great option for you. And lastly, if you compare Vanilla with Fedora Silverblue, it achieves immutability through the use of AB root. However, it's worth noting that OS3 may eventually replace AB root in the future. To install Vanilla OS on your computer, it's best to run it on a virtual machine using GNOME boxes. If you want to experience Vanilla OS on bare metal, you will need empty drive to install it. To get started, download the ISO image from the link provided and use Vanilla Etcher or the DD command to burn it to the USB drive. Then boot your computer from the USB drive and follow the on-screen instructions to install Vanilla OS on your computer's drive. Now one thing to note is that Vanilla OS comes with the Jade installer which is based on GTK4. Now just follow the prompts to complete the installation process and then reboot your computer to start using Vanilla OS. And that's pretty much about Vanilla OS. What do you guys think about it? Let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching my video. This has been KSK Ryo. I'll catch you in my next one.